Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for joining our oral session seven of Project Part Two. I'm a chairman. My name is Jae Sung Min from Busan, Korea. And today we have a total of eight oral presentations about the OpenGIS Part, and it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our all OOD oral presentations. The eight topics. In this session, the all speakers will focus about the uh, gastric cancers and so on. And actually, one of our speakers, the eighth presenter, Dr. Sumil Lee, joined in real time in this Congress, and we will have another Q&A time after all presentation. So please enjoy the lectures, and after all lectures, we'll have a Q&A time with our speakers, the eighth presentation, Dr. Sumin Lee. And please feel free to ask our speakers your questions by clicking question button at the right side of the screen or via the chat window. Thank you. Now let's start our, our presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm really, it's my great honor to be here for sharing my experience. My topic is an um, inter objective mode for predicting survival and uh, deciding therapeutic schedules a comprehensive analysis of peritoneal metastasis in patients with advanced gastric cancer. Peritoneal metastasis is generally regarded as an incurable systematic disease with a poor prognosis. Scholars have also proposed and developed many staging systems for assessing the progress of patients with GCPM in line with the consistency revised and the updated PM grade proposed by the JGCA. Among them, the key stage, the PCI, and the, the PABC. This stage combines the nodal diameter position and the morphology, but in, it uh, indicates not only GC but also other digestive tract cancer. The definitions for the position of nodal were full of subjective. The PCI takes into consideration the distribution range and the size of peritoneal nodules, but it only considers the factors of peritoneal nodules and uh, is not able to complete the comprehensive evaluation. PABC shows an uh, impressive dis discrimination ability, but it fails to consider the size of the transform the nodules. Despite a few advancements in the preoperative diagnosis and the early confirmation, GCPM effective prediction has not yet been achieved. An increasing number of studies have indicated that preoperative blood markers are closely related to the survival of cancer patients. Our study combined the preoperative imaging blood markers and the intraoperative peritoneal nodules, nodule characteristics to build an intraoperative mode for GCPM. The retrospective study included 381 patients. The inclusion criteria and the exclusion criteria were shown in the finger one. Finally, 324 cases were analyzed. Among the cases that have evaluated by the preoperative CT, non wall nodules were identified as preoperative nodules confined only to non abdominal wall locations. A wall nodule was defined as a nodule distributed in the abdominal wall. Nodule distribution size consists of the vesicle peritoneal 
upper abdominal pelvis, and peritonea in the middle and the lower abdominal pelvis. Peritonea based on the number of involved areas, the number of nodule distributions that range from one to three. The population included located in the diffuse types. The former was defined as each peritoneal nodule isolated from each other and was not connected together, while the latter was defined as densely distributed nodules that were connected into a mass or corroded the surface of the abdominal wall. Shows the link on the pathological data. The statistics who participated were generally based across groups. The review shows the result of the Cox analysis of the training set. Multi analysis showed the independent Rex factors for GCPM. Constructed the normal ground model and the corresponding PM. The, de the decision curves show the predictive threshold of PM was higher than that of PABC. In addition, the AUC value of the PM at each time point was higher than that of the PABC. The survival curve showed that each PM subgrade could be completely dis distinguished from the other. The survival curve of the PABC has the similar results with PM1. The internal and the external validation says that the PM1 was also better than the PABC in terms of its predictive ability. This is PM who received the Palliative resection and the chemotherapy had a significantly better OS than those who received the chemotherapy, palliative resection, and the exploratory surgery. Mm -hmm. One patient's those undergoing palliative resection had a better overall survival than those undergoing exploratory surgery. Among the patients undergoing exploratory surgery, those who received the chemotherapy exhibited better OS than those who did not. Among the patients who received the palliative resection, only PM1 patients exhibited better OS following chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. We developed and validated a simple spec specific PM model for patients with GCPM that can predict a prognosis where well the guide treatment decisions. Hello everyone, my name is Tracy Jing from Fuxian Medical University Union Hospital, China. Thank you for giving me a chance to introduce my, my study. Prognostic analysis of patients with intra-abdominal infectious complications after laparoscopy and open gastric cancer radical resection, a propensity match study. We have no personal or financial interest to declare. Investigate the incidence and prognosis. The background of the study is to investigate the incidence and prognosis of intra-abdominal infection complications after laparoscopy assist gastrectomy and open radical gastrectomy for gastric cancer. Method The data of patients who underwent 
vesical gastrectomy for gastric cancer at the Fujian Medical University Union Hospital from January 2000 to December 2014. Retrospectively, LIG and OG were used. One-to-one -one propensity score matching was used to reduce biases. The incidence and prognosis of postoperative IAIC in the two groups were analyzed. Before PSM. Table 1 shows the general clinical data of patients before PSM and after. Before PSM, there were significant differences between the two groups in age, BMI, ECOG score, tumor location, tumor diameter, CT stage, CN stage, and CTNM. After PSM, there were no significant differences in clinical data be be between the two groups. Table 2 shows the short-term patients before and after PSM. We can see in the table the incidence of IAIC before PSM in the LAG was higher than that in the OG group of which P value is 0.012. However, there was no significant difference in the incidence before the two groups after PSM which p-value is higher than 0.05. Figure 1 shows the effect of IAIC on 5-year OS. We can see, according to the stratified analysis of data of patients with or without IAIC, we can find that the 5-year overall survival of patients with IAIC was significantly worse, which p-value equals to 0.024. Table 3 shows the relevant factors that affected the overall survival of patients after radical gastrectomy for gastric cancer after PSM by Cox regression analysis. The result of multivariate analysis show that IAIC age more than 70 years, number of tumor locations more than 2, tumor diameters higher than 50 mm PTM stage 2 and stage, stage 3 were independent risk factors for overall survival of patients with gastric cancer after radical gastrectomy. Table 4 shows us that LAG was a prospective factor for the prognosis of patients with IAIC. This speaker is talking about the effect of LAG and OG on 5-year survival of patients. Figure 2a the five-year overall survival rates of OG and LAG patients were similar. However, in Figure 2b and 2c, for patients with IAFC before and after PSM, the five-year OS of patients with IAIC in the LAG group was significantly better than that of patients in the OG group. Compared to OG, LAG can improve the prognosis of patients with postoperative IAIC. For high-risk patients with IAIC, LAG is recommended. Compared. Thank you for your attention. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Hong Yingqi. It's my great honor to be here for sharing my experience. My topic is 
prognostic importance of dynamic changes in systematic inflammatory markers for patients with gastric cancer. Systematic inflammatory response is crucial to the development and progression of cancer. Tumor specific survival and progression of disease are influenced by both the characteristic of the tumor and host. In particular, systematic inflammatory response started after that. Systematic inflammation markers, including lymphocyte to lymphocyte ratio, neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio, platelet to lymphocyte ratio, and systematic inflammation scores. As significant prognostic factors of various tumors, including gastric cancer. However, most of the studies were mainly limited to examine the preoperative level of these markers to evaluate prognosis. Surgical and chemotherapy treatments are important prognostic factors and have an impact on the level of SIM. Reports on the significance of postoperative SIM in predicting the long term prognosis of gastric cancer were rare. Therefore, the purpose of this study was to investigate the longitudinal changes of SIM in patients with gastric cancer before and after surgery and the impact on long term prognosis. The definition and card of value of LMR, NLR, PLR, and SIS were taken from previous literature respectively. Periods when hematological specimens were free measured were 1 to 6 months and 12 months postoperatively. The inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria were shown in a slide. Finally, 2,108 cases were included in this study. Clinical pathologic characteristic of the patients was shown in supplemental table 1. Univariot analysis and multivariate analysis showed in table 1. Higher NLR and and SIS scores were independent prognostic factors for overall survival. Table 2 shows the AOC values of the 5 year overall survival predicted by SIM in each postoperative period. The AOC value of the 5 year overall survival predicted by pre SIS was significantly higher than that of pre NLR, POR, and LMR. Postoperative SIS at 12 months had the highest AUC value. The five year of all survival patients with different pre SIS were significantly different. Time ROC curves were established to compare the predictive value of pre SIS and post SIS in 12 months for the prognosis of gastric cancer. The results showed that during the follow up periods, Post SIS at 12 months was superior to pre SIS. The conversion of post SIS at 1 to 12 months was analyzed except 12 months after the operation. The SIS in each postoperative period was significantly changed compared with the preoperative period. We determined 12 months after surgery as the optimal period for post SIS measurement. Figure 2 shows the LOS for patients whose pre SIS and post SIS at 12 months were both available. Based on the result, we calculate patients into different levels of SIS. Supplemental figure 3 shows that overall survival of patients with different redefinition of SIS were significantly different.
patients were categorized into the following four groups, low SIS to low SIS, low SIS to high SIS, high SIS to low SIS, and high SIS to high SIS. The overall survival patients with low SIS to low SIS were significantly better than that of the other three groups. We classified low SIS to low SIS as the lower risk groups, high SIS to low SIS, and high SIS to high SIS as the intermediate risk group, and low SIS to high SIS as the high risk group. The KM curve showed a significant difference in OS among the risk groups. Koch's multivariate analysis showed that the risk groups defined by SIS were the independent prognostic factor for overall survival. This study is the first to investigate the dynamic changes in SIS at one year after surgery and the effect on the long-term prognosis of gastric cancer patients we found that both SIS at 12 months was more effective in predicting prognosis than pre-SIS. The increase in post-SIS at 12 months predicted poor prognosis providing a basis for monitoring SIS at 12 months after the operation. Further risk stratification can help patients and clinical researchers enhance surveillance intensive. Thank you for your listening. Hello everyone, I'm Zheng Xu. I'm from the Department of Gastric Cancer Surgery, Fujian Medical University Union Hospital in China. Thank you for your uh, chance to introduce the effect of septemia on short and long-term outcomes in patients with gastric neuroendocrine neocreations after radical gastric tummy results from a large true exclusion theory. We have no personal or finance interest to declare. The background of this study is shown in this PPT. Gastric neuroendocrine neuroprescence is a class of tumors with significant ketogenicity, accounting for approximately 4% of all neuroendocrine tumors, and its incidence is gradually increasing. And the uh, uh, tree is including three different categories because of its different uh, clinical pathological features, the understanding and the uh, uh, prognostic factors of GNEs are still really studied. Uh, and recently, the influence of preoperative body composition parameters, such as skeletal muscle mass on um, post-operative short-term and long-term outcomes, has attracted the attention of scholars in the East and the West. However, no studies have reported the effect of vaccine on the short-term and long-term post-operative outcomes of failure. This PPT has showed the definition of sarcopenia in our study. In the current research, low skeletal muscle mass is mostly used as the definition of sarcopenia. We collect 138 patient data from the two institutions and divide uh, SMI uh, less than uh, 44 Point three for males and uh, uh, SMI less than uh, turn, uh, 32.4 for females as sarcopenia. This PPT has showed the inclusion and the exclusion.
explosion created rare in our study, and we collect 138 patients data in this study. Uh, the table one has showed the basic uh, characteristics of patients with and without sarcopenia. The baseline characteristics of participants were generally balanced. The table two showed the post-operative complications in 138 patients. In this study, there was no significant difference in the instance of total post-operative complications, surgical complications, and the systemic complications between the uh, with and without the sarcopenia group. According to the physical location of the complication, the results showed that there was no significant correlation between sarcopenia and uh, specific types of complications in patients with uh, GNMS. Table 3 showed the uh, uni and multi uh, variated analysis of factors associated with three year overall survival and recurrence free survival rates in GNMS patients. And uh, uh, the results showed that, that only the ASA score uh, post pathological on stage KI uh, 67. Positive, positive index and the sarcopenia were related to the three year OS and RFS rate. Uh, table 4 shows the, the uni and the multi variated ana analysis of factors associated with three year overall survival and uh, recurrence free survival rates in GMI and EC patients. Uh, in this analysis, uh, the pathological on stage KI67 positive index and the sarcopenia were related to the three year OS rate and uh, the three year RFS rate. This figure shows KM analysis for three year OS and RFS rates of patients with GNNS according to sarcopenia and uh, a stratification analysis based on pathological types. Uh, it shows that only in overall patients and the JMAIC patients, uh, the uh, KM analysis is a significant difference. And uh, the conclusion is in this study of uh, SMI less than 44.3 from for males and uh, SMI less than uh, 32.4 for females were found to be the optimal cutoff point for sarcopenia in GNMS. Sarcopenia was not significantly associated with post-operative complications in patients with GNMS. Sarcopenia is an intended risk factor for the long-term prognosis of GMAS patients undergoing multiple uh, gastric tummy. Further prospective multi-center studies are need to confirm the prognostic value of sarcopenia in patients with GMAS. My speech is over. Thank you for your attention. Hello everyone, I'm Zheng Xue. I'm from the Department of Gastric Surgery, Fujian Medical University Union Hospital. I'm from Fuzhou, China. Uh, thank you for your for the chance uh, to introduce the application of an uh, artificial neural network for predicting the chemotherapy benefit of patients with gastric cancer after surgery.
we have no personal or finance interest to declare. The background of this research is uh, a driven chemotherapy has been recommended as a standard treatment for patients with stage 2 and stage 3 breast cancer. However, there is still significant neurogenity in patients with the same pathological state and uh, a driven chemotherapy may not be necessary for all patients with stage 2 and stage 3 breast cancer. However, uh, the benefits of a driven chemotherapy in patients with sketch cancer are often affected by a variety of factors which are not completely independent and over, over have complex interaction. Therefore, it's an important topic in the field of sketch cancer research to explore predictive models that can predict the individual benefits of a given chemotherapy in patients with stage 2 and stage 3 gastric cancer. So what is an artificial neural network? It is a kind of a complex network system that is connected by a large number of simple basic elements and carries out the uh, parallel processing and the non-linear a conversion of information by simulating the human brain neural processing. Many studies have shown that uh, ions can better deal with nonlinear uh, static spatial uh, relationships than, than traditional uh, analytical methods, including a study of prognosis of various cancers. Look, Clinical pathological data of patients who underwent radical rejection of sexual cancer from January 2010 to September 2014 were analyzed retrospectively. Uh, patients were uh, randomly divided into a tra training code and a validation code. And uh, AI model were, was established uh, and its ability to predict the benefit of chemotherapy was evaluated by the C index. Uh, the prognostic prediction and the stratification ability of uh, AI and the uh, AJCC stage system were compared by RC curve and the uh, KM uh, curve. In our study, the average OS of patients in the no CT, no chemotherapy group was uh, 48 months. The uh, 639 patients in the chemotherapy group with OS times of more than 48 months were defined as the chemotherapy benefit group. This PPT showed uh, what we selected to, uh, uh, to the AI model and how we established the AI model. And uh, uh, the AI will out output two values, the patient's chemotherapy benefit and uh, the continuous variables from temporary uh, 0% to 100% which would represent the uh, predictive probability of the outcome of patient's chemotherapy benefit. Uh, the table 1 shows the baseline between the no chemotherapy group and the chemotherapy group uh, and the no chemotherapy benefit group and the benefit group uh, there is a lot of uh, characters uh, is a significant different in two groups but uh, we purpose is to use this difference to see can we use can we use this difference to uh, 
predict the chemotherapy benefit. And the table 3 and the figure 3 shows the prediction results of the thermostatopy and benefit in the training quarter and the validation quarter. The ALR have both showed the good predictive ability. The C index is was open the Several four nine in um, training code and the uh, all point uh, seven 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 in validation code. Figure two has showed uh, the comparison of our sequence between some central pre benefit and, and uh, uh, HSCC staging system in training and validation code. In both code, the common uh, central pre benefit and uh, has a good better ability uh, in uh, OS and RSS. And the figure 4 shows the comparison of our sequence between the centipede benefit, benefit and, uh, and the HACC staging system in stage 2 free patient. In, the, in two stage patients and the free Stage 3 patients, the chemotherapy benefit and uh, both showed good, uh, better ability than HACC staging system. The figure 5 showed the subgroup of 5 year RFS curve of the HACC staging system and the chemotherapy benefit. And, uh, and uh, uh, in the training court and the validation court, the AJCC staging system is is uh, worse in uh, some stages. Uh, for example, uh, in the training court, there was no significant difference in RFS survival curve between the stage two A and two B, but in the uh, uh, training quarter and the validation quarter, the IFS survival curve of each subgroup of chemotherapy benefit and uh, should good discrimination. The conclusion of this study is an uh, uh, prediction model that can effectively predict the benefits of a, a driven uh, chemotherapy after radical resection of gastric cancer in stage 2 free patients was established and uh, verified for the first time and it was suggested that the uh, predict, predictive ability and the clinical applicable of the model were significantly better than those of the traditional staging system. The resulting individual chemotherapy benefit both can help clinicians develop individual treatment stages. However, its effectiveness still needs further external verification. My speech is over. Thank you for your attention. Long-term survival outcomes of single incision distal gastrectomy compared with multiple distal gastrectomy using propensity score matching. The authors have no conflict of interest to declare. Single incision distal gastrectomy, otherwise known as SIDG, was first reported in 2011 by Dr. Omori. SIDG has now become more feasible due to technical advances in minimally invasive surgery. In a previous study, SIDG for treatment of early gastric cancer offers possible benefits such as less operative pain and better cosmosis without increasing short-term complications.
In our center, SIDG is being performed for select patients who have been clinically diagnosed with EGC. Currently, there are no long-term studies reported for SIDG in gastric cancer. The purpose of this study is to analyze the long-term oncological safety of SIDG by comparing it with the traditional multiport laparoscopic distal gastrectomy. This is a retrospective cohort study, including patients diagnosed with gastric adenocarcinoma who underwent laparoscopic distal gastrectomy from January 2014 to April 2017. Exclusion was as follows. Surgery of palliative intent, having stage M1, and having history of other primary malignancies. Primary endpoint was the three-year disease-free survival. Secondary endpoints were three-year overall survival, median survival time, operative outcomes, early and late complications. After exclusion, a total of 1,325 patients underwent multi-pore distal gastrectomy and 253 patients underwent single-pore distal gastrectomy. Patients were then matched using propensity score matching, age, sex, ASA score, previous history of abdominal surgery, preoperative chemotherapy, clinical T-stage, clinical N-stage, and tumor size were variables. After matching with a ratio of 1 to 1, 247 patients were enrolled in each group. Patient demographics are shown in this table. Most of the patients underwent uncut Roux-en-Y for reconstruction. More than 80% were early gastric cancer, and also more than 80% had no lymph node metastasis. There was no difference in the number of retrieved lymph nodes and margin. Operative time and blood loss was less in the single port group. Time to first flatus was slightly shorter in the single port group. There was no difference in complication rate. There was no difference in overall survival and disease-free survival between the two groups. After stratification by T-stage, there was no difference in overall survival and disease-free survival in two, the two groups. There was no difference in overall survival and disease-free survival after stratification by N-stage. In conclusion, SIDG is safe and feasible with good long-term outcomes for patients clinically diagnosed with early gastric cancer. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Gwon. I'm from Aju University School of Medicine, Seoul, Korea. Today my topic is on the efficacy of 3D laparoscopy in laparoscopic gastrectomy for gastric cancer according to surgeon's experience. Prior to the presentation, I declare no conflict of interest with any company. The 3D scope system provides surgeon's depth perception with its better arousal, thereby it is known to reduce technical errors during laparoscopic procedures and to enhance the surgical dexterity. However, there are still controversies in the efficacy of 3D scope for laparoscopic gastrectomy for gastric cancer. In a meta-analysis, 3D scope was helpful to shorten operation time, reduce blood loss, or obtain more lymph nodes compared with conventional 2D score. A retrospective study suggested that 3D score might enhance surgical performance in the demanding procedure such as splenic hyalur dissection. But in a recent prospective randomized trial, these advantages of the 3D scope 
were not significant. Why did the randomized control trial fail to obtain positive results? Interestingly, in many preclinical studies using dry ray, the experimental groups divided into novices were inexperienced surgeons were experts. And they concluded that novices could benefit from 3D scope rather than experts. However, surgeons' experience has not been considered in the previous studies. For this reason, we added the stratification factor, surgeons' experience, and analyze the data to evaluate the efficacy of 3D laparoscope in laparoscopic gastrectomy for prostate cancer. This was a retrospective study, including 451 patients. For the analysis, we divided two groups, each for two surgeons. Experienced surgeon A had performed more than 2,000 cases, whereas in experience surgeon B, less than 200 cases prior to this study. Because there are many compounding factors influencing interior or post-operative outcomes, we used the propensity score matching method to reduce the bias. 1 to 1 or 1 to 2 matches were performed with a caliper 0.2 and matched variable included age, sex, BMI, ASA, clinical TN stage of pre-operative CT scan. The intraoperative factors such as type of gastrectomy, extent of lymphadenectomy, and the construction method were included. This table shows the changes of patients' characteristics before and after matching in surgery. There were no significant differences before matching, but the balance was improved after the matching. In surgery B, there was significant difference in preoperative T stages between 3D and 2D group. After the matching, it was dissolved and other variable balance was also improved. This graph shows the intraoperative outcomes according to 3D versus 2D laparoscope or surgeon's experience. The time difference between 3D or 2D scope was about 3 minutes and it was not significant in surgeon A. However, significant difference was observed in surgeon B regardless of the matching. The operation time was shorter as about 15 minutes in the 3D group. In estimate blood loss, there were trends of rest for blood loss in 3D group regardless of surgeon's experience. However, those did not lead to statistical significance. This table shows post-operative outcomes in the matched groups. In surgeon A, there was significant difference in the number of retrieved nephros whereas it was not in surgeon B. In addition, there was no difference in post-operative costs such as time to soap dial, hospital stays, and overall complications. In contrast, in surgeon B patients, time to soap dial and hospital stay were shorter in the 3D group. Shortly in this study, the application of 3D system for laparoscopic gastrectomy resulted in different outcomes according to surgeon's experience. More promising outcomes were observed in inexperienced young surgeon group. In conclusion, 3D laparoscope may enhance surgical performance and improve short-term outcome in inexperienced young surgeon later experienced surgeon. Thank you for your attention.
I'm in fellowship in Aju University Medical Center. I'm going to present a way of esophageal jejunostomy comparing MOPS procedure with circular stapler procedure in a point of view of midterm outcome for EJ related complications. The background of this study is uh, esophageal jejunostomy after total gastrectomy is the most technically difficult type of anastomosis. Anastomotic complications such as leakage and stenosis sometimes occur. Anastomotic method is still controversial and our group developed MOPS, modified overlap method using nautilus barbless suture technique for EJ stomy in laparoscopic or robotic total gastrectomy. There are many various intracopular EJ stomy methods. Uh, first group is circular method, uh, consists of three types, and another group is linear type uh, method, consists of two types. In Aju University, most modified overlap nautilus barbara suture has been done from 2013. As you can see, jejunal lube is taken up to the sopager stub. EJ and JJ anastomosis is made. And last, the jejunal is divided into raw limb and biliopancreatic limb. Department of Surgery Aju Medical Center introduced most procedure at 2016 already. And in the journal, we make sure MOPS is feasible, and this time we will present the midterm outcome of MOPS compared to a circular type method. Uh, this study is designed in retrospective course study, uh, January 2012 to uh, December 2018. The institution is Department of Surgery, Aju University of Medicine. We include the patient who underwent total gastrectomy from January 2012 to uh, December 2018, and patient approached by open uh, excluded and only counted laparoscopic and robotic total gastrectomy method. Complication, uh, completion total gastrectomy was also excluded as a package agenostomy done by extracorporeal method excluded as well. And after operation, pathological R1 resection was excluded last. Uh, I will explain the uh, procedure of MOPS. First, central uh, region of the sopager stump, uh, bi uh, stump bilateral uh, bilag is applied. Second, uh, pulling the bilateral bilag between the barbless suture full by the stump by energy device and identify the intrasopagial uh, space. Third, uh, pulling down the barbless suture, taking the jejunum with the energy device, blade with the jejunum gently push between the right and left uh, uh, cross muscle, and simultaneously insert the energy device of a uh, free blade to the true movement of the uh, sopagos. And last double, uh, double closure of entry hole using barbless suture is done, and five trochocyte is needed, and the camera port is extended one or two centimeters more to pull out the specimen. By the other hand, this is the circular method procedure. Purse string suture applied first, and will put into the stump. Purse string tighten, and CDH inserted. Furthermore, four. CDH insertion extension of 3 or 4 centimeters of port is need additionally, which result in muscle spillage. We evaluate the complication in 6 months after operation EGD, CT, and immediate operation diagnosis has been counted. Complications such uh, complication cases counted according to the Clavian Dindo classification over grade 3 as the classification requires surgical, endoscopic, and radiological intervention. We define the cases as the EJ related complication. Let's see the uh, result. Uh, this table shows baseline of characteristic of our pa uh, patient group. Mm, all the factor is well balanced, but the ear factor has a low p-value. Uh, the reason of this is AGC covered by laparoscopic method more as time goes by in as University. And this is the table uh, operated outcome result. Uh, other factor is uh, well balanced, but low p value of p stage means uh, the laparoscopic prevalence uh, also uh, affect in pt stage and p stage, which have reliable p value. Uh, 
advanced gastric uh, cancer covered by laparoscopic method more. In a, uh, in a aspect of pain, linear type of anastomosis is a little bit profitable to patient because in a view of the trochocyte, uh, the, the, uh, the muscle spillage uh, results from uh, the circular type. So the uh, pain is uh, more in um, uh, circular type. From 2012 to 2018, EJ-related complications of course 90 cases, 5 from linear type and 14 cases from circular type. As you can see, total EJ complication and EJ stenosis on reliable p-value have more risky rate on circular method, but uh, on a leakage and bleeding tendency to depending on the method is not certain. Uh, through the data, we analyzed the factor that uh, can affect EJ anastomotic uh, complication rate, but only two uh, factors have meaning, uh, that is uh, method and proximal resection margin or, according to the p-value, uh, especially MOFs or uh, circular uh, method uh, affect the EJ complication rate. This is a graph of the trend of the operation cases. Uh, uh, circular type is orange line and linear type is blue line. Gray line uh, is the flow of the percentage of EJ related complication against total gastrectomy case number. From, uh, from 2012 to 2018, SMOFs uh, replaced the whole operation rather than circular type. EJ related complication decreased uh, growth. To summarize the uh, above, uh, above analysis, uh, notably uh, anastomotic stenosis were identified predominantly in circular method group. Uh, anastomosis related complication of MOPs decreased over the years. This trend makes sure MOPs replacing the intracorporeal esophageal jejunostomy result in lowering the uh, risk of EJ uh, related complication. In conclusion, uh, MOPS is a safer, uh, safer procedure with less complication for intracorporeal esophageal jejunostomy compared to conventional circular step plan method. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you for all speakers and your great VOD presentation. And now we will have a Q&A time with our speakers. And actually, two of the VOD present presenters join live in virtual Congress for Q&A time. And one of them, let me introduce them. And one of them is the Dr. Oh, Wing Kui Huang from China, and on the other uh, presenters joining Q&A time is Dr. Sumin Lee in Aju University, Korea. Uh, yeah. Actually, sadly to say we have no question received. And let me ask uh, some questions to uh, Dr. Sumin Lee from Aju University, and thank you for your body presentation.
uh, and then we can uh, we anastomosis to the topazio stump and jejunum. So uh, this procedure is different. The pulling down the uh, topazio stump in the uh, to the abdominal cavity, and we insert the uh, uh, blade energy device to topazio stump on the central region of topazio stump. So the linear anastomosis of a previous uh, case is very different um, in the two points. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Shimin Lee. And uh, the other question is the the PRM was the one of the risk factors for complications, is a anastomosis, and mm -hmm. I wonder the reason. Uh, the uh, proximal resection margin uh, is if the process is, uh, resection margin is uh, get shorter, uh, the resection get close to the sopagio stump. So that that means uh, sopagio region. So that means it is very hard to anastomosis with a uh, narrow space uh, near the sopagio stump. So the double layer suture uh, after the anastomosis is it uh, get very hard. So this reason uh, lead to the uh, uh rate more. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your answer. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Wing Ki Huang, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yes, I can hear you. Yeah, can you answer the question right now? Uh the internet is not sufficiently working between us. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me ask one question. Your topic was a prog prognostic importance of the dynamic change in systemic inflammatory markers, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, and actually I wonder that the inflammation could be influenced by the advanced stages because of the complication in advanced stages after surgery. And I think it could not influence directly to the prognosis. Can you understand me? Mm. The more we advanced stages we met and the more we could met the higher instance of complication. And can you understand me? The, so in the result, the mm, inflammation complication can be indirectly influenced can indirectly influence to the prognosis instead of the TNF stages. Yeah, that's my private opinion. Or the minimal invasiveness or open approach, each can influence the systemic inflammation and so on. But do you have you ever compared the difference of the approach method, open open approach or minimal invasive approach in your study? Mm, I, I can't quite understand this question. <laughs> sorry. I'm very sorry for not understanding you. Yeah. Uh, let me ask another question. And, this is the virtual congress of the Korean Society of Endoscopy and Laparoscopy Society. And uh, I wonder the relation between minimally invasive and your presenting topic. Do you have any relation between minimal invasiveness in your study? Uh. Both of laparoscopy or endoscopic procedures in your study? In, in, in 
in this party. Uh, Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, can, I can hear you now. Oh. From, from just now on, you cannot hear you before. The network is unstable. Yeah, yeah, we understand that we are so far between us. Uh, uh, or or uh, in this study, all the patients were underwent laparoscopic surgery and um, uh, recently, uh, laparoscopic surgery were more popular now. And we wonder the prognosis will more better uh, and, and uh, accept TMM stage. Uh, SIR is also a crucial uh, prognostic factor for patients. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your joining and participating and answering the question. Yeah. We should have a limitation. Yeah, so far from here, yeah, we understand that. And there were no more questions yeah, from the audience. Do you, the audience, do you have any another questions by internet or anything? Yes, uh, I hope we have an answered for all of your questions. If there were, um, if you have another question from audience, we will collect the rest of the questions and forward, forward the question to the speakers. And thank you for your attention and participating of the virtual congress of KCLS. And we need to close this session and. The another the other oral session will begin from afternoon today. Yeah. Thank you everyone. Thank you for your presentation attention. And thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.